Hi, it's Danny here from GCSE Potential, and today we're with Soham, a first-year computer scientist at the University of Cambridge. Computer science at Cambridge, I don't know what you guys know, but this place, it's absolutely mental, right? Computer science, you can look at the statistics, etc. It took me so long to find a computer scientist who actually has social skills. I think Soham is just about there, just so he's getting there. Um, but yeah, we're very lucky to have him on today. And obviously today's video is about how to get into Cambridge for computer science. So the kind of trajectory of the video is going through every stage of the application process. GCSEs, A-levels, personal statement, admissions test, which is the Tamua, and finally the interview. And then we'll talk a little bit about the course and we'll have some things dabbled in, I guess, throughout. But to begin with, um, a quick introduction from Soham, so go for it. Hi, my name's Soham. I'm a first year computer science student at Jesus. And yeah, I went to school in Manchester where I did maths, further maths, physics, and computer science. So I guess to begin with, first stage of the application process is GCSEs. So my first questions are like, A, what sort of GCSEs do you need for computer science? And B, are there any ones which matter like more than any others? So for example, are there any ones where you basically need a nine in that subject? Um, so required, I would definitely say maths is the most important. So I think you need maths and English, right, yeah. to a certain level, but uh, specifically for computer science, a GCSE maths, having a nine would be really useful. And yeah. if your school offers further maths, taking that would help as well. Uh, but beyond that, to be honest, not much else because GCSE computer science, you definitely don't need to do very, very unserious GCSE. <laughs> yeah, physics as well, that could help. But other than that, just whatever you enjoy really, like sciences, but just focus on maths, I would say. And like in terms of rough GCSE grades, like what should you be aiming for across the board? I guess aiming for is a better question because everyone's aiming for straight nines. But a better question is like, what do most people have in their GCSEs? Yeah. Obviously, it's not the end of the world if you don't have, you know, all eights and nines. Like, a lot of people do generally, but um, I feel like it's more important to have good grades in the subjects that matter. So, you know, if you have like a six or a five in like a random language or something, mm -hmm. it's not it's not that serious. But yeah, across the board, just try and aim for eights and nines generally. And if you have a few sevens, it's not that important. So yeah, I wouldn't worry. I can actually attest to that. I have a family friend who's, he did computer science. I think he's unk status now, so I think he's graduated. But um, he got like a four in Spanish and he always tells people about that because he did computer science at Cambridge and he got a four in Spanish. Yeah. So generally, if it's like a random like jobless subject, it does not matter. Yeah. But maths obviously does matter. Like everyone going into the application process is going to be so good at maths. Like I'm sure Soham looks very unassuming right now, but he's absolutely cracked at maths. You have to be. So I'm moving on to A-levels. The questions I have to ask are like, A, what subjects should you be doing at A-level? B, what sort of grades are required um, with your predicted grades, obviously? Like, do you need an A star on further maths, for example? And um, I guess any other thoughts on A-level? Levels. like do you need physics as well uh maths is definitely required again and further maths is strongly recommended so basically what that means is if your school offers it you should definitely take it but if your school doesn't offer further maths um you should try and maybe self-study it over year 12 summer or just do as much extra maths as you can but yeah other than that i think the third most commonly picked subject is physics which is which might be a weird one i yeah. think maybe just because it's such a difficult a level like doing well in a level physics could just be seen as desirable and then computer science is the other subject that i took but it's definitely not required and they they honestly won't care that much if you took it or not it's kind of very surface level anyway. So maths is, again, and further maths are the ones that they care about the most. And in terms of predicted grades, like what rough predicted grades you need like across the board? Um, I don't know what the entry requirements are. I presume it's a, like A star, A star, A. And um, do you need like that A star in further maths, for example? Do you know anyone who got an A in further maths? Generally, if you're predicted grades, you're gonna want either all A stars or two A stars and an A, or two A stars and two A's. And uh, yeah, maths is definite A star. Further maths also, I think A star is almost definite. And at least my offer and everyone else's offer that I know about had A star in further maths required, but funnily enough, not maths. So they said, yeah, just A star in further maths, but the, the other A star doesn't have to be in maths. But yeah, and then in your other subject in A. And yeah, I, I don't know too many people that got in without an A star in further maths because that was most people's offer, but um, I could vary by college, I guess, but at least at Jesus and most colleges that I know about, you want you want two A stars and an A, and then A stars in maths and further maths, definite. And um, how important is it if you do three or four A levels? So do you know many people who did three A levels only? Does it provide you with an advantage if you do four? Um, so I have a couple of friends that did three A levels because their school didn't offer four, and uh, I don't think it matters that much if you do four. It's I guess it's useful to kind of show that you can manage an extra subject. And if you just wanted to take an extra subject, for example, like if you wanted to study A-level computer science, it could be helpful to do four, but I definitely wouldn't stress about it. Just 
having, you know, three A stars is definitely better than two A stars and two A's. So I would focus on doing really well in three. And if you think you can handle four, maybe pick up a fourth. Fair. So I think that covers basically everything with A levels. Um, I don't think computer science is really that important based on what no, you've said. Yeah, so yeah, computer science isn't that important. The main thing is just maths. Further maths A stars are really important. And obviously physics is just what most people take. Have you ever heard of anyone with a weird combination getting in? Just have interest. Um, I mean, some people as their fourth do like economics or like a language or maybe something rogue, but pretty much everyone has maths and further maths and like I think 96% of people had physics as well or something like that. Okay, cool. So that covers GCSEs and A-levels. So those are sort of like the baseline things. The thing to keep in mind though is like if you have four A stars predicted or anything, that does not mean you're getting in. I think basically everyone who applies is four A stars predicted. So now we get to the nitty gritty of the process. So personal statement, admissions test and interview. So to begin with, with the personal statement, obviously for your year, it's going to be different to those who are applying a bit later. Um, so when both of us applied, it was 4,000 characters just on one big document. Whereas in your year, it'll be three separate questions. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that it's mostly the same. The questions basically split up what the personal statement usually asks for into three separate questions. So for everything we say right now, basically just consider it within the context of your own personal statement that's going to be in 2026. Things are basically the same, just in a different kind of wording. So yeah, with personal statements, I think it's quite weird for computer science because it's a STEM subject, so you don't really know what to talk about. Um, so I guess my questions are like, what should you sort of put on a computer science personal statement? What are they kind of looking for? What did you personally talk about? What helps you stand out? Yeah, I think it is kind of vague and it's not as clear cut as maybe like humanities where you're yeah. just gonna like read books, and, you know, really dive into like a topic you're interested in. But uh, for computer science, I would say projects probably the most important thing. So just picking a topic that you're interested in and just coding something interesting and just make make something cool that works or, or doesn't work. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, the point is that just, you know, you, you're interested in something and you tried building it. Uh, other than that, competitions are really good like Olympiads, coding competitions, mass competitions, stuff like that. I think that was the first paragraph in mine was just talking about like the coding competitions and mass competitions and stuff. And then projects and competitions aside, then you can start looking at, you know, like your books, your MOOCs, like YouTube videos. Maybe you do like an online course in Python or AI or something like that. And then yeah, just finding interesting things, watching YouTube videos, maybe build a project based off of a YouTube video or a course that you took. Yeah, kind of things along those lines. Going into the specifics, what sort of competitions would you recommend? Like which coding competitions, which math competitions? So the, the UKMT competitions are really good for math. So the Senior Math Challenge. And then if you get like the BIO, or sorry, the BMO that as well. Uh, aside from that, maybe more coding competitions side of things. There's things like the Purse Coding Competition, which uh, I think that's actually just up to year 11 maybe but for i guess you could kind of just do coding problems in your own time like project euler or just kind of competitive programming or problem solving type questions and then there's also a british informatics olympiad which is like the bmo but it's for programming that could be something to look into as well thank you very much i think that's quite comprehensive with the personal statement so yeah guess moving on now from the personal statement well actually the last thing to say is how important do you think the personal statement is for computer science because i think it's quite differing like course to course definitely not that important <laughs> yeah. I, i'll just say this straight up like it's not at least from my experience yeah. uh, the admissions test and interview are going to matter a lot more like kind of showing like competency is a lot more useful to you know the admissions tutors than seeing that you like read a book and were interested but definitely still make sure your personal statement is really good but it's not like the end of the world and your TMUA and interview will matter a lot more. Perfect and that's a very nice segue to the Tamua. So I think the Tamua and the interview as Soham said are the most important things by far. I think that pretty much goes for every single Cambridge course, to be honest. I don't really think they care about personal statement much. So um, yeah, I guess starting off with the Tamua. Loads of questions. Everyone always has questions about the Tamua. It's graded on a one to nine scale. The Tamua is basically just a maths exam, two different papers. Paper one is just straight maths. Paper two is kind of like logic as well. Um, it's about 40 questions a paper, so 80 in total. I think you have two hours. You can find a lot more information online about it. It stayed the same. I think when Soham did it, it was slightly different in the sense that it was administered by a different like organization, but it's basically the same exam. So um, I guess loads of questions like, how did you prepare? What sort of scores do you need if you want to get in for computer science? What score did you personally get? All of those sorts of things. So can you try and give us an overview for the Tamiya? So I got 7.4 in TMUA. <laughs> um, generally, I think they say 6.5 plus is seen as strong. So if you're around that, kind of mark you can comfortably probably get an interview also depending on like your predicted grades and GCSEs yeah. of course but yeah I think the average offer holder score is like seven point something so if you're around that mark you can kind of go into your interview feeling like don't don't think you're guaranteed to get in definitely <laughs> but uh, you can be comfortable that if you perform well in your interview you're going to have like a solid chance and in terms of preparing uh, I wouldn't waste the past papers too early. I would yeah. kind of save a lot of them for closer to the time. So maybe like during year 12 and summer, before you do the past papers, try and look at kind of UKMT type problems like SMC. You could do multiple choice 
or just any kind of maths problem solving questions that you find that are interesting. So personally, I did the step support modules as well. I thought they were really useful. And then I was also prepping for step for Imperial. So I did a lot of step one practice and then step two practice until January. And I think that helped quite a bit just with problem solving and like difficult maths problems. But yeah, the most useful resource other than the TMUA past papers, obviously, will probably be map papers, like multiple choice. Echoing everything he said, um, obviously I'm going for economics and I had to do the TMUA as well. Didn't quite perform as well as the GOAT, but um, yeah, those resources were basically the same ones I used. I don't think I did as much step prep. I think, yeah, there's a bit of debate on like how useful step is. I think it is useful. I was probably just scared of it um, because it is just so difficult. Um, did you do just step one and step two? I was just preparing with my school to yeah. sit step for imperial so i did the step support modules and then i did some step one questions and then i would just do like some step two questions weekly and go through them with like some of my classmates and teachers yeah and i think that all sounds to be very very useful so just as much maths as possible pretty much problem solving type of maths so yeah i guess building off that now like to me is kind of like you need to get around a certain score for your interview to matter quite a bit because if you don't get a certain threshold then you probably won't get an interview um cambridge gives out interviews to most colleges but actually i looked at something interesting recently i think some colleges like changed so for example Trinity only gave out like 60%, like only 60% of applicants were interviewed, which is different to how they usually say it's about 75, 80%. So I think the tide is turning a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Um, but all that to say, your Tamiwa matters like a lot. If you don't get a good Tamiwa, then even a strong interview performance won't really help you that much. Um, but yeah, interview, I guess the most important part. Yeah. So there's so many questions to ask about the interview. I guess the big ones are like, what sort of stuff roughly comes up in the interview? How can you prepare for the interview? And what does it take to stand out in the interview? So the interview is probably not going to be that much personal statement question related. They might ask you a couple like warm up questions just about like a project you did or to, you know, tell them about something that you found interesting. But the kind of main part of the interview is going to be like problem solving. So either maths questions or logic questions, programming style questions, but anything where they're going to throw something unfamiliar at you and you're going to have to reason about it and problem solve. So I would definitely practice a lot of problem solving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like what specific resources did you end up using to prepare for the interview and kind of what does it take to stand out? The, the most useful resource is definitely just doing mock interviews with like anyone you can find to give you a mock interview. Mm -hmm. So, you know, any you could get a friend and go on Zoom with them and just ask each other questions and pretend you're doing a real interview or ask your teachers, ask people in the year above you, year above you that you know, maybe got into Cambridge or did a Cambridge interview, ask them if they remember their questions and they can ask you the same questions that they had or similar questions. And yeah, just practice speaking your thoughts out loud. I think is the most important part because it's, it's easy to kind of get lost in your own mind and not say anything and just write and think in silence. But actually being able to explain your thought process is a skill that you definitely have to practice. In terms of practicing for the problem solving, there's an exam called the CSAT, which I think Trinity do for their admissions. And it has quite a few kind of longer, more difficult programming or like problem solving math type questions. So you could uh, treat them as if they're interview questions and kind of just speak through them, even by yourself, like try and solve them and then speak through them as you're doing them. I think they also provide hints for those, which kind of simulates a real interview as well, where if you're stuck, uh, your interviewer would give you a hint. So if you do get stuck, you just click on the hint and then try and go as far as you can with that hint. Yeah, I think a lot of useful resources there, to be fair. It is just such a difficult thing to get good at, but I think mock interviews are such a useful thing. Another, well, two things I want to say. Firstly, I think LinkedIn is pretty pretty useful if you want to find anyone. You can just find someone in first year doing computer science or something like that. Um, try and get them on their time off. Obviously, Cambridge is eight-week terms, but eight times three is 24, and there's 52 weeks in a year. So less than half the year spent here, something like that. So um, if you catch them on their free time, they might be able to help you out. So that's one thing. Um, and obviously, that can be completely free. You don't have to pay for that. Um, some people are really nice. The other thing to consider is um, something that I did for my own interview, but using ChatGPT. So obviously, it's a bit variable, all of this and that, but you can download the ChatGPT app, and there's a voice function, which means that you can basically ask it to ask you difficult logic questions and then it can assess basically the quality of your answer with regard to how well you speak the answer how logical your thoughts are etc so if you don't have anyone to work with or if you just want to do something on your free time maybe consider using chat gpt um but yeah any other final thoughts on interviews or if you get stuck definitely don't think you failed the interview so they're expecting pretty much everyone to get stuck at some point and if you don't get stuck like that's a miracle you must be a genius but yeah i definitely got stuck several times and everyone i know got stuck but they're kind of looking for when you get stuck, they're going to give you hints. Can you use those hints well and really listen to what they told you and go as far as you can, like given what they've told you. So you're definitely not expected to get everything right first time. So don't expect to. And you know, you're, you're going to be okay if you don't 
and if you get stuck. Okay, cool. Now, so after you've done your interview and all of that, one thing to keep in mind, I guess this maybe should go at the start of the video, but whether you actually want to do the course, I think a lot of people are attracted to the idea of like computer science, software engineering. They don't really know what goes on with that. So I guess my question to you is like, what actually is computer science at Cambridge like? So I'm halfway through my second term, but the, the first one and a half terms have been kind of very understanding how computers work at like a fundamental level. So introductory courses to you know, algorithms, mm. databases, uh, kind of a lot of basic mathematical methods that you're going to need, uh, just really understanding the core concepts that you're going to use in all the other modules. And uh, maybe something that's different about Oxbridge is that we go really, really in depth into all these different modules. So you will be learning like how these algorithms work to a really, really fine kind of degree. Yeah, some people will probably find it a bit too theoretical. Yeah. So, and yeah, it's not as practical as other courses. So we do have kind of like these coursework ticks where you will be programming like certain tasks throughout the terms, but no real like coursework projects, at least in the first two terms. I think there's a group project next year that you do. But yeah, if, you, if you're interested in kind of the theoretical side of computer science and like really understanding how computers work, you know, how they solve these interesting problems, I would, recommend this course a lot it is really fun it's intense but i'm enjoying it a lot like i do really enjoy it oh, wow proper computer science in that idea he seems to fully enjoy it fair play i was actually surprised by that i thought you'd be a bit harrowed by the experience but good positive vibes maybe about the workload because yeah the, the workload can be quite a lot sometimes especially if you you don't balance it well and your time <laughs> management's not amazing but yeah i would i think that comes with practice to be honest the first term for a lot of people is just kind of figuring out how you want to study and how you want to balance your time so this term personally has been a lot better in terms of like managing my time, managing my workload and just being on top of things generally. So another thing to consider is like when you're applying to Cambridge, you have to pick one of the 31 colleges. So um, I guess my question is, obviously Sir Hamza Jesus, a very beautiful college. Um, why did you pick Jesus, A, and B, like how much does college choice matter with regard to getting into computer science at Cambridge? Uh, so I didn't really pick Jesus for like a specific reason. It was kind of random, but I just, I like the look of it. I did like a little bit of research into colleges and uh, Jesus a com looked really nice mm. and everyone said the people were really friendly, which they are. The food's really good. The the rent prices aren't too high. You know, the grounds are lovely and it's quite central as well, which is something that I, I really appreciate. So I would think about all those kind of factors when you're picking a college, like the size of the college, the location, the kind of facilities on offer. Some some colleges that are com will be like off site, really far from the actual college itself. So maybe do a bit of research into that. I think Jesus, all the com is either on site or on like the neighboring streets, which is really useful. But yeah, in terms of admissions, it shouldn't like theoretically make much of a difference because as you know, Cambridge claim, they've got the pool system to make everything fair so if a college is oversubscribed you should if you're you know if another college wants you they will pick you out of the pool and you should still get a place at the university but some colleges might have different style interviews or more difficult interviews and that might make it harder for you to kind of demonstrate your skill set as effectively so um maybe ask some people what their interviews were like maybe they were more programming based or more mathematically based but it shouldn't make a difference hopefully nice thank you so much now we've pretty much come to the end of the video it covers absolutely everything about you know the application process i guess the final thing i want to ask is do you have any final bits of advice or any final remarks to say to students who are trying to apply to computer science at cambridge i would i would say do as much maths as you physically can because that's i do so much maths right now like the course is is a lot of maths we have the nst maths which is the natural sciences maths so we do the same maths module as people that do physical natural sciences and biological natural sciences so yeah we have the natural sciences maths and then we also have discrete maths which is more computer science based math. So like a lot of logic and yeah. set theory, things like that. So yeah, I would just recommend you do as much maths problem solving, difficult questions as you can, because that will, that will help a lot. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Soham. Hopefully this has been useful for anyone considering computer science at Cambridge or even any like maths based course, because it's all quite similar. But yeah, thank you so much. Hopefully this has been really useful for anyone applying and hopefully Cambridge will see you soon. Thank you very much for having me and um, best of luck.